evening and welcome to Jakarta. It is the final day here for the FIBA Basketball World Cup. Spain taking on Canada. Well, there's no better way to say it, but you win or you go home for these two teams. Canada looking to bounce back from a loss to Brazil. Spain looking to bounce back from a loss to Latvia. Shona Thorburn alongside Mark Clark. Mark, what does Canada have to do to bounce back from that? I, I want to say shock, but it wasn't really a shock because Brazil deserved to win from the opening tip. Yeah, but it was a shock given the way that, that Canada got into that game. What do they have to do? They have to rediscover where they were before that game. They shared the ball really well before that game. They moved the ball a lot better. They got contributions that were not always about playing one-on-one. -on -one. And I think they've got to... It's hard. I, no one's making it any sort of like it's an easy thing, but you've got to get that team concept in a very short space of time. It looked like they'd established it. They've got to rediscover it because I don't think playing one on one basketball, they can beat the current World Cup champions. You said it. They are going up against the World Cup champions from 2019. Jordi Fernandez, they had a day to prepare. He was definitely disappointed in that post-game press conference with how his team uh, produced, and he thought everyone, including himself, needed to be better. This is the World Cup. If there's any team that knows how to win when they're not supposed to, it has to be Spain. Well, you've just summed up how Spain won a Eurobasket last year. <laughs> No, they weren't seen as a fav the, one of the favorites, uh, and out favorites when they were winning the World Cup in China. But they know how to win. Some of our colleagues describe it as it's in their DNA. They know what it takes. They know they have to share it. And you look at the statistics on these two teams. There is very little to choose between them in almost every stat line. Spain share the ball a little bit better. Canada score more second chance points. There's a number of little little areas that either team can can have that advantage, but I still will say you know, Canada can't beat Spain playing one-on-one -on -one basketball. Spain have different ways they could win this game, but they have to take care of the basketball because there's no better team in this World Cup than team than Canada scoring points off of their defense. You said it, they got to buckle down and defend, especially against a very good Spanish team scoring 86 points a game. No real superstars. Well, we could say Willie Hernan Gomez has made a name for himself. Eurobasket MVP last year for coach Scariolo and his staff. There you see him. I mean, if there's a coach who's more talented than Scariolo, I'd love to see it. Latvia with a big win. They will be moving on 104 to 84, Spain and Canada coming up now and here you see it depending on what happens today Canada can move up to first position and drop Latvia to second either way we know Latvia are moving on we will take a quick break for the playings of the national anthems ladies and gentlemen if you are able we now invite you to stand for the national anthems we begin with the anthem of Canada Thank you. And 
please remain standing for the national anthem of Spain. Thank you very much. Well, Jordi Fernandez must know Sergio Scariolo. Well. And as we see the respects and the exchange of mementos. Well, the third team on the floor tonight. There is the crew chief in the middle, Julio Anaya. Juan Fernandez and Jenna Renault from Panama, Argentina, and the USA, respectively, will be calling tonight's game. Well, Canada, they have looked excellent until that hiccup against Brazil. And I think it's all about how can they rebound back after it was a tough loss. I mean, it was it was not pretty from Canada, especially on the offensive end. They're known defensively. They held them to just 64 points. There you see the starting lineup. Shea Gilgis Alexander, Dwight Powell, RJ Barrett, the captain, Kelly Olinick, and Dylan Brooks. Well, it's the same lineup. I mean, there was no need for Coach Fernandez to panic. That's not the issue. I think it's more about you know, he said he had to look at himself, but players have to look at what happened in that game. Sheik Gilles Alexander just had a tremendous World Cup so far, 27.3 points per game, ranked sixth. But the, the issue was that they, they started to stand and, and almost players on the floor became spectators when he had the ball. And in the first couple of games, it was Kelly Olnick who really did solve the problems when it wasn't going their way against France in the first half in particular. He was... The, you know, really, really important. But then he didn't see enough of the basketball when Brazil slowed the game down. And that's what Coach Fernandes really has to look at what happened. Why were they so affected by the game being taken to a different type of tempo? Because it was not up and down. They were having to spend a lot of time on defense. They didn't really get into any flow and rhythm. Now that's all very well. But that, that, does that mean any team that does that to Canada, they're gonna struggle? That's, that's not enough to make this team. They've got to be able to impose their own style yep. at times, and they didn't. And that's the most worrying thing, that they were actually trying to win the game another team's way. Yeah. Well, it didn't work for them as they came up with the loss. Had they won, this game would have meant possibly less. But they didn't win, and Spain didn't win the other night either. So Lapia moving on. As we see Spain starting five tonight, we have Claver, Hernan Gomez, Alex Abrines, Juan Nunes back into the starting lineup, and the brother Juancho Hernan Gomez. Well, it's interesting that uh, Sergio Scariolo has, you know, chopped and changed a little bit with his starting lineup. But the Hernan Gomez brothers are, have been permanent in that lineup. Yep. Willie there with full team points, four from six from the floor against Latvia, but he, like everybody else in Spain, you mentioned the loss. They ran into a Latvian team down double digits against Spain. And Spain just tried to control the game. You can't do that to Latvia. You have to play them hard the whole way through. Usman Garuba, who I thought after the first two games, he'd really found a role coming off the bench. But Latvia dealt with it, with, dealt with most of his threat. So he, again, he's got a lot to prove in tonight's game. Should be a game he's more used to, and now being obviously a player in the NBA. But you mentioned earlier on, Sergio Scariolo, yeah, there'll be other coaches who can be talked about in the same bracket, but none more so than Sergio Scariolo. He has won everything there is to win. He's won everything from a club perspective and a national team perspective. One of the greats of 
coaching full stop of the, in the FIBA world, one of the very, very, very best. Yes. He's got to be at his very best, though, to get this win because this team, as you said, really does have to be prepared, really does have to put a team game on the floor to get a win. And no one better than Sergio Scariolo to do that. 100% agree with you. There is not a better coach who knows how to win, in my opinion, in this tournament than Coach Scariolo and Spain. But tall task. Uh, I mean, I think they have to play team basketball. I think if you watch the game against Brazil, you gotta you gotta control the tempo. At the same time, Spain, no real superstars, so they do like to move the ball quicker. They like to play with a little bit more tempo than maybe Brazil did. And it's gonna. It, you said it earlier, we're talking about Canada. Are they gonna let teams just decide how they wanna play or force them to play like they wanna play? You I mean, can't win. The interesting thing in that is Spain may well take 15, 16, 18, 20 seconds offensively, but they won't walk it down in the same way Brazil did. They'll take 18, 20 seconds moving the basketball, looking for early options. It's more, for me, the, the one thing Spain have to do take good shots so they don't give them a lot of opportunities off of defensive rebounds and they cannot turn the ball over a 19 year old point guard is going up against an nba all-star there's 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 the point of the issue how that type of battle goes is probably how this game's going to be decided difference being nunes won't have to do it on his own i think just alexandra may have to do a lot of this on his own some last minute instructions there from both coaches. Well, you saw that little statistic pop up. If uh, history is on its side, Spain has never lost two in a row consecutively at a World Cup since 1990. That is a good sign if you're a Spanish fan. Really, again, we talked about it in the France game where Canada won the big opening night 30 point win over France. It's almost experience going up against talent. And that's what this, this Canadian team has. I think this has been a great experience for them. Is their experience gonna end tonight? And are they have to get a rebuild? Are they gonna be able to come up? That's a big point, Shoni, you've just made really, because expectations got raised for Canada. <laughs> now, the, you know, the, now the pressure of, if we lose this, we're coming home, is a big, big pressure. If that, that's, that's also pressure is a privilege. Let's see how they react. Good evening and welcome to Jakarta, Canada, taking on Spain here at the FIBA Basketball World Cup. Spain winning the jump ball. Nunes uses the pick by Willie, gets it into Willie. And he flexes his muscles. If, if Canada play that passively, they're not winning. They can't play that passively. They can't let Spain run their systems. SGA gets it up to Brooks. Brooks bullies his way against Nunez. And it's going to be a basket plus the foul. Not sure what more Juan Nunez could have done there. He was pretty straight up, but you're saying he was moving to the side. As, as Brooks changed direction, Nunez went with him and the contact happened while he was on the move. Coach Scariolo and his staff are, are want to know why there was no help. You know, why weren't people squeezing in to help in that in that in that matchup? Well, Dylan Brooks with nice performances for Canada. He has struggled with fouls oh, though, and he's had to go to the bench a lot in this tournament. Abrinez goes baseline. He kicks it back out to the youngin, the youngin to Claver, the veteran. His first look off the rim, but nice offensive rebound. Got a box out. I mean, don't forget these teams played each other in preparation. Five point win for Canada. I know preparation doesn't mean too much. No. But they have had a good look at each other. That's the, that's the big thing. Powell gathers, finishes. Nunez now, extra pass was tipped, and a football, oh no, sorry, a tripping call is going to go against Kelly Olenek. That's a much better defensive series, though, by kicks. They really did work hard to close out, didn't give that easy penetrate kick 
set three-pointer that uh, they gave a little bit up against Brazil late in the clock the other night. Nunes. We're going to be saying his name a lot moving forward with this Spanish program. Not sure if it was a pass or a shot. And the referees are actually going to say shot clock violation. Let's take a look. So that was the air ball. That's, that's all the, that, he'd let go of the ball before there was like 0.1 or so on the clock. If you, look, if you look at it again, there was still time on the clock when it came out of his hand. Can, I was just about to say, can he not well, they can challenge, challenge it, it and he's officials. going to. Yeah. I, I would be amazed if this, these bar, that basket doesn't count. You and me. It's only point one or point two, but I'd be very surprised. Let's we take a listen. On a white folk challenge for the shot clock violation. Back, back. Okay, we go basket. Signal. The release is on time, so we go basket for Y14, and we go baseline for red. Yeah. After review, basket is basket confirmed, comes. and we go baseline for red. We go basket counts on Y14, and we go baseline for red. Well, he has to use a challenge to get those two points. And the Spanish bench was making that point. They, 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 they said, could you have asked the table before you just wiped it off if it was that close? And they've used their challenge. Well, it's got them two points, so they have a return on the challenge. Powell goes out right. Herringer Gomez, no good. Olenek almost comes up with it, but Powell is stripped. Claver. This pass is tipped. Hernan Gomez, he's got the mismatch. And Albrinas can't hold on to it, so it's going to be an over and back call going against Spain. Again, that, that's a much better set get defensive series by Canada. Much more active. A lot of contact, bumps. That's much, much better. If they play like that and take Spain out of their rhythm, that's really going to help the cause. Surprised that Willie Hogan Gomez just didn't go. Yeah. I thought that was a back in and go yeah. get a shot you wanted. Got the smaller Brooks on him. Barrett now goes inside to Brooks. Brooks, a little fadeaway shot, tough. Shot is no good. Nice defense there by the youngin. Nunez. Albrinez. Finds Hernan Gomez in the corner. No good, comes up with another offensive rebound. See, they're, they're the shot, well, two things. They're the shots that Spain have to make. The other thing is they're the fouls that Brooks can't commit because that's just loose ball. He's lost the rebound. He's just got to control it. He he's going to pick up fouls anyway. He can't give cheap ones away like he just did on that foul there. He's too important to Canada to get into foul trouble. Yeah. And they get it in. Clever. Abrinas. Shot clock. As Nunez attacks, he's blocked by Powell, though. Barrett now pushing the tempo for Canada. He goes right at Hernan Gomez. Nice left hand finish Super by RJ Barrett there. Yeah, that's an example of those bad shot misses where they've got a chance to run out of the block. Brinas has got to come off cuts here, wanting to shoot the ball. They go inside, back to Nunez. Nunez active early in this game. Shot, fake, shot, and it's no good. That's a better box out by Canada. Again, they're pushing the tempo. This is where Canada's dangerous. It's going to be an offensive foul, though, and you said it. That's going to be his second, but you talked about him picking up his first. The, the crazy one's the first one. That, that's just, is this a foul or not? Yes, it is, because he looked for the defender with the contact. But the first one is the one that costs him. That's the bad one. The other thing is that the referees missed a bad, mad miss on the Nunes shot. 
really did have his hand taken away on the flyby. Good news for Canada as Brooks goes down, but Dort, a, a defensive specialist. He's made his career defending some of the best players in the NBA. Olenek, no good as he turns it over. Nunez. Ooh, nice fake. Drive baseline. And a blocking foul is going to be called. I believe he probably was inside the semicircle. Well, show to the. Uh, the worry, the worry for me looking at this, looking at Canada offensively here is the loss to Brazil has almost made them think a little bit too much. Some of those turnover situations that they've generated. That was a tough call. I oh. thought he was inside the semicircle. He was a good. And the call was late as well. It's like if it's not, that's one of those fouls for me. That if you don't call it when you see it, then you let it go. Let it go. I mean, if anything, it looks a bit offensive than, than, than the block. But we don't have a whistle in our mouths, and we're off the court. Probably for good reason. We Very don't. for a good reason. <laughs> such a good reason. And he makes the second uh, as well. Intriguing. It's such an intriguing matchup. Just almost want Canada to just be aggressive in what in whatever set or whatever they're in. Oh, nice backdoor pass. SGA not able to hold on to it, though. He does save it. They find Barrett for three. No good. And Abrinas comes up with a rebound for Spain. Nunez now. Dort. Hernan Gomez steps out, no good. And again, an offensive rebound for Spain as Claver comes up with that one. Hernan Gomez goes right at Powell. Can't finish, but follows his rebound. And Spain out to a three-point lead. SGA has been, you could say, quiet. He hasn't had a lot of touches on the offensive end so far in the first five minutes for Canada. Much happier with that, though, after the make bucket there. They really did attack Spain coming off the made bucket by them. And Spain had to foul. And every team's had to do that to him. To slow him up, they've had to foul. Spain are, are masters at using fouls properly. They get it to SGA. Corner, door is left open. Nice screen by Powell to get him open. And he makes it count as Canada tied the game. Dort had a couple uh, precautionary uh, games where he didn't play. Well, they, and also, one of the few Canadians who did play re played well. And that three-point basket is going to count. Yeah, should and it's count. another foul going against Canada. Because it, it was in the action. He was in the action of shooting, regardless of when the whistle went. And it's an off-ball foul. Therefore, I can't believe they're gonna, they, if they write, they write this off, it's an interesting one. Yeah, they're gonna give it, yeah. they're gonna count it. They talked about it, and I'm sure that's what they talked about. Did you blow your whistle before the three was released? They say yes. So again, another foul for Canada. They had already committed five fouls at the six minute mark. And these are the kind of foul, you know, you get into foul trouble early, you put a good Spanish team on the free throw line. So that's a five, potential five point play. Well, that shot's short. I mean, they haven't shot free throws exceptionally well here, but if you look at their individual stats from seasons yeah, past, they're good free throw shooters. Yeah. They just hasn't gone in early for them in this tournament. I mean, Claver is 81% on last season, as an example of that. Yeah, you know, he's missed one. He's not perfect. Why has he got a third? I don't know. Or did they call off that miss? No, they've got the, the oh, one. You, here, I think uh, Coach Fernandez is going to listen to the referee. Hopefully, we can I listen in. Okay, we've got one more. Good. He no, said uh, Kelly Olenek came into the uh, lane he, on that first free throw. First, he, walked, he walked the baseline in the lane when he was releasing the ball, yeah. Okay. 
Okay, no damage done, he missed it. Yeah. Dort can't hold on to it, though. But he somehow gets it back. Canada got lucky on that possession. Olenek gets it up to Dort. He's knocked down one. And he's going to stay at one. Well, there's the difference between some teams here. Olenek had a good one. Dort had a good one. Olenek gave his up. And he's actually a better three-point shooter in this tournament than Dort is. It's not the score that worries me, it's how to get the tempo of the game that worries me if you're a Canadian fan. They started well pushing the ball. Yeah. Even on mix, they can get out and run. Barrett takes it at three white jerseys and is able to score. Well, RJ Barrett, that's his second made hoop. Very aggressive move. Well, Spain not backing down. Good job there by the veteran. Inter so interesting, this. SGA. Sees his first shot go in. And Powell having to defend Hergen Gomez. Oh, nice shot fake. They go inside. No good as they thought there was a foul. They throw it upstairs to Barrett. Barrett just brings it down. Good decision to not go up if you weren't prepared. And a moving screen is going to be called on Kelly Olenek. So some foul trouble early for this Canadian team. As we see Olenek with two, Brooks with two, Barrett has one. Dort has won. Carl Alexander getting into the game early is not usual. And, and Coach Fernandez did this the other night, didn't he? he Try to find combinations and get the, get the whole thing to start to work. Hernan Gomez, almost with the turnover. Clever, fancy layup is no good. Barrett, good job by Barrett. That's the second time he's just taken it in transition and scored himself. Unless Spain actually stop Canada, they've got to play this game in transition. If they don't, Spain challenge them to get back. Diaz. Sergio Yul at the buzzer. I think he's a player who's knocked down the most buzzer beaters I have ever watched. You said it, they know when to foul and slow down teams. Yep. Probably one of the smartest teams at doing a foul like that. And that's a whole, uh, a whole new five on the floor now for Spain. Both um, Sergi Yule and uh, Alberto Diaz are not the most, been most productive offensively for Spain in this tournament. It's an interesting time with this sort of backcourt for Spain. Alexander getting some early minutes here for Canada. Barrett takes the contact, draws the foul. I like that. Be aggressive. Hey, if they're calling it down on the other end, go ahead. Force the referees to make the call on this end. Yeah, and Garuba just showed in the middle, but he's going to take it. He's going to go hard down the middle, R.J. Barrett. And wait, if it wasn't for R.J. Barrett getting now, this could this could not be this wouldn't be a great first quarter for Spain. He's pretty much carried them a little bit with being aggressive and getting yeah. to the basket, not settling for outside shots. As Diaz kicks the ball, and Trey Bell Haynes getting some playing time. He didn't play in the last game for Canada against Brazil either. But was really good the game before. Had a really great game. Yeah, game. he had a great game. Didn't miss player the, of the yeah, game. Absolutely. Dort drives baseline. 
finds Barrett. Barrett's three-point shot is good. What a game he is having early for Canada. You said it without Barrett's numbers. Canada doing now what they've done to a number of teams. Look where Spain are now having to run their half, their half court from. A long way. Struggle to really get the defense to react if you're that far out. They get it to you. You's gonna have to put it up. He does. High floating jump shot. No good. Canada now pushing the tempo, playing a little bit more their style. Barrett trying to do a little bit too much there. Good defense though. And miscommunication on that pass. Numbers now for Spain. They go inside. Diaz comes off. He's open, that shot's off. Defensive rebound, Barrett again pushing the tempo. And a foul is gonna go against Rudy Fernandez. And that will send RJ Barrett to the line. Last three possessions, we said at the back court for Spain. Sergio Yule late in the clock has taken two. Alberto Diaz, a little pull up off the dribble, not his game and that's, you gotta credit. The defense for Canada. Garuba going to the perimeter is also why, you know, he's got the ability, he's got NBA pedigree to really get the job done around the ring. And RJ Barrett, wow. Well, I mean, that's yeah. that's his best quarter of basketball in this World Cup in the most important game for Canada. And he's on from the line, from the three-point line, going to the hoop. Couldn't have done any more. Yul. Aldama Fernandez, he comes off, he attacks, he finds Diaz, Diaz, nice shot. Spot up shot, yeah, yes. brilliant, excellent. Well, you've got an NBA four and five out there for Spain at the moment. Baseline, Bell Haynes at the buzzer is no good. So not a bad look there by Canada as they had a slow start. If it wasn't for RJ Barrett, the score would probably not be tied 21 apiece after 10. Well, the numbers, Canada 40%, Spain two from eight, and they've taken some bad late threes. That's, that's the issue for them. Now, Canada was 75% from the two when they're aggressive. They're, they're in a really good shape. Why is it still just tied up with those numbers? Well, Spain have got more trips to the line and have done a nicer job on second chance points. But I think Canada at the end of that quarter found the way they've got to play. The tempo was a bit higher. Their defense, to be fair to their defense, was really quick but didn't try to steal it. They actually didn't give Spain anything to go against. So again, you've got to say that, that you know, Canada have found a way to be competitive here. And if they can really play the same way defensively, they're going to force Spain to take some bad shots. I think at the end of the day, Spain just went too late too often in the, in the, in the half court. I absolutely agree with you. I thought Canada it took them uh, quite a few minutes to figure out what they needed to do defensively against the Spanish team. And when they figured it out, their defense led to them getting offensive opportunities, especially R.J. Barrett coming up with some nice rebounds on the defensive end and pushing the tempo. Well, there you see passes per game. Spain, that's the tournament average. They are number one. So they sure know how to use the ball, especially offensively. And there's many possessions for this Spanish team where all five players touch the ball in one possession. And the difference with, such a difference with them and Canada. You know, it's, when Shea Alexandre is going, uh, get, you know, Alexandre is going well, his team stand around and watch him a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, it's the balance between the two. Spain are passing the ball, getting nothing. Canada aren't giving Shea enough opportunity where he has advantage. He's having to work hard for all his. Olenek with the two fouls back in the game for Canada. Fancy move, no good. Alexander can't come up with a rebound. Fancy and smart huds up play there by Fernandez. And a foul is going to be called, I believe, against yeah. Alexander Walker. 
Ooh. I mean, it's a foul, but we saw where the referee caught it yeah. from. And rather late, it was kind of the reaction from Spain yeah. that almost enticed the referee to make the call. Yeah, I would agree with you. Sergio so Yule is, is having a hard time at the moment. That won't worry him. He's so experienced. He'll work, work this one out. Aldama's three-point shot is good. Nice look there from Spain. As Fernandez, Rudy Fernandez playing in his 37th game at a FIBA World Cup. There's only four players ahead of him who have ever achieved that. Dort sidesteps, gives it up to Shea. SGA. It's the first time his team have given him a look. Diaz is tipped from behind. SGA now, he's going to throw it home. And a nice five-point run by number two of Canada. Again, for me, Canada, they are very, very long and physical defensively. They get defensive stops. They're scary on offense. Fernandez, no good. Garuba, offensive rebound. Uh, I think it was tipped from behind by Dort, though. Well, how about this? Brooks checking back into the game. He has two fouls as well for Canada. No one in foul trouble for Spain. I don't want to call it foul trouble, but two fouls. Uh, you pick up your third early well, in the second. If you're Brooks, it's it, it's one of the it's one of the things that's really giving you problems. Aldama takes it right at Brooks. Nice finish with the left hand. And Aldama was one of those players that really didn't contribute enough against Latvia. He's he's come off the bench and five points back to back hoops. SGA. Got casual with the ball. Somehow holds on to it. Olenek has a clean look. That's back iron. Dort tips it to Garuba, though. And Aldama's running. He wants it. Yul gets it to him. And that three-point shot is no good. And a foul on the region by Diaz, though. I don't like and I might be wrong. I'm, I'm absolutely happy to be wrong on this. I don't like it's only a foul if it affects it, because that was a reaching foul that was in was, 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 was committed, and then it, it didn't become a quarter foul until a little tick on the clock later. The S is going to just foul harder next time to make sure she, she stops yeah. the game. SGA. Spin moves. Hang time. Hits the backboard, no good. They kick it out. Alexander Walker inside the Olenek. Olenek's blocked by Garuba, though. And ball is going to go back to White. And you look at the game, and where, where does... Canada has an advantage in the backcourt. Uh, undoubtedly has an advantage in the backcourt at the moment. You know, just that give Shea the basketball back after he's moved the ball. He's going to give it up a bit more if he knows he's going to get it back. Yeah. Up front, this matchup is pretty even. Yul to Diaz. He gets it back. His corner shot is no good. Olenek looked at the referee, thought he was fouled on that rebound. SGA penetrates, finds Dort cutting. Dort's layup is no good. Canada missing opportunities here. But uh, the difference from the other night is they're going after it on the glass, though. They really are doing a good job at keeping it alive. And a couple substitutions here as Canada were actually playing with really only one post player on the floor as Brooks was on Aldama. And you just see Powell checking back into the game for Canada. Spain is surviving at the moment. They really are in the backcourt. They're, they're struggling to really get good looks. Dia gives it up to Aldama. Goes inside, Garuba. And got it off on time. Oh! Heads nice up. heads up play there by Rudy Fernandez to Aldama. Again, it's not, they are really, Canada are forcing them into plays here. Forcing him to make non-Spanish actions, so we say it just went it that way. Olenek 
And another turnover. By Canada, so ball back to Spain. Missed opportunities really on the Canadian uh, side of the court offensively. Hey, Garuba's a tough, uh, a tough rotation because he was, uh, you know, he got the block. His, his physicality really does match Canada's. Aldama's going to have to play a really physically now. Another turnover. SGA making it look easy, finds Olenek wide open. That rolls in and out, and Powell just can't hold on to it. Canada only averaging 11 turnovers a game in this tournament. They already have five here today, so credit to Spanish defense. Aldama's made one tonight. That one's no good. Barrett stops, pops off the mark. I think he could have attacked uh, Hernan Gomez there. See, the, and the, I think that first quarter like sums up how great RJ Barrett is at times. And then that shot says the sort of thing, well, that's you're so much better at those other things. Why don't you do the things that you're so good at? The standstill jump shot in the corner off the, off the penetration, his feet are set. But again, Canada going hard to the glass. That, that most, almost the most impressive thing, apart from RJ Barrett's performance, is that Canada are really going hard to the glass here. Well, Brooks went hard to the glass, but on the shot as he gets that scooping layup to go in. And Brooks has to be careful. as he's guarding the taller Aldama. He's just so physical. <laughs> Hernan Gomez. Crazy. How smart is that? It's a crazy foul, isn't it? It's, it's, it's a very silly foul. But Herm Hernan Gomez, knowing that Barrett's about to run into him and just shoots the ball. And, and Canada are really forcing Spain so far away from the three-point line that any advantage or read they might get out of these actions is just negated. It's just, it sets up, but like 2.1 seconds on the clock, just you don't make that foul. You don't get suckered into it. taking his time at the free throw line. One of the coaches has an official warning, and I'm not sure, and I think it might be Jordi Fernandez because they've already warned him, so now officially warned him about oh. something. Once I'm officially warned him, that's, they can't do anything else apart from react to, if he does anything they don't like, they'll have to tee him. I don't really see why he needs to, or they need to either at the yeah. moment. I think Spain are up, but I'm liking Canada more at the moment. Brooks, that's going to be goaltending, so good job staying aggressive as I believe it touched the backboard. Oh, yeah. Easy, easy call there by the referees. Yeah. Hernan Gomez. Fernandez left open. Finds out Brinez. Yeah. Great patience and ball movement by Spain. Alex Abrines is, 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 is everyone recognizes as, as a shooter. He's an exceptional shooter. At times he just doesn't shoot enough. Great ball movement, great three. SGA now. And DF. I know we've said this before, but it's a bit wearing that players just don't agree with any kill that goes against them here. <laughs> SGA had, had, it, had protected the ball, it was away from him, and Diaz reached. It's a foul. Let's just move on. He's doing hard defensively. He's really putting them under pressure. The referee calls it. We're okay. SGA's three point shot. Oh, goodness me, how he makes it look easy. 
Never rushed, right? Never looks rushed. It didn't even look like his feet were set. Nunez now. Hernan Gomez goes right at Powell, but a block from behind. Barrett now, this is where he's been at his best. Oh, and an offensive hooking foul is going to go against R.J. Barrett. Wow. I thought a foul might have been called against Aldama before Barrett hooked. I do think Barrett hooked him. Yeah, yeah, but the same point. See, look, right here, that's There's a foul. A, that's a foul. That's the foul. Yeah. yeah. But the referee allowed that to go on, and there you get the, 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 other, the other end of it. Aldama. Again, how far Canada are forcing Spain outside that three-point line. Hernan Gomez right at Powell, and he takes it. It's good defense, no? Oh, no, I'm, 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 I'm impressed both ways. Great take. Powell's like not, didn't bring his arms down. Con yeah. There was contact, but he's entitled to space as well as. And there you see the block on the last possession. And they get it in to Abrinez. He gets a clean look, no good. Dort flies in for the rebound. Dort takes it at Fernandez. Does a good job moving his feet. Brooks, that's a tough, tough fadeaway shot. No good. It's hard out there. It, they are playing. It's Both teams hard. know what is on the line. Defense is exceptional. Physicality, immense. Well, you cannot leave an open look to Abrinez more than once. Uh, as, that, that, wait, hold on, we have an unsportsmanlike foul off the ball, about, off it, it, the ball going not, against Canada, right? Yeah, it's not a good one either. We don't see it because we don't get on that angle. I'll be interested to see what they, they actually call here. Dylan Brooks has picked up his third foul on an off ball on an off ball rebound. We didn't have a good let's take a look here. We so there, number hit. 24, Brooks. Do you think it should have been an unsportsmanlike? Well, if they called a foul, then it probably has to be because he's saying that his elbow was up and into. But I'm again I'm not. But you're taught to Well, you're taught to box out with your yeah. elbows up and not your hands, so I'm not. Well, timeout, let's listen in to Coach Fernandez. Go middle, go away, Dylan, Curlin, Shay, we're bringing you back up. It's from, double away? Yeah, double away, just from your catch we play, all right? Hey, this time out here, it's a one position game, and just to get a little rest. I want, I want to finish strong and finish really hard three minutes. Hey, we're better these guys. Listen, hey, just make sure we can test that we rebound and forget about the rest, all right? I'm, I'm gonna stop, but if we believe and we stay with it, we'll be okay. Coach, one more thing. Well, there's Abrinez knocking down raining threes here in Jakarta for Spain. And you heard that timeout. Sorry for the language, but I like what he said. Hey, you guys don't worry about it. It's my job to talk to the referees, not you guys. Continue to play. It's only a one possession game. And Alex Abrina is coming out tonight. How many times with, with some of these national teams do we see a guy that, you know, he's had a quiet tournament and in, in, a, in a, need, a game they need him, he steps up. It's Abrina's his turn to do that. And, yet, and again, you can't say, I know you called the heads up play by Fernandez earlier on. You know, his fifth World Cup, you mentioned the number of games he played. He's defensively, he's out there playing hard defensively. He's doing the things that he probably did in 2006 <laughs> when he made his World Cup debut. That's a big call. 2006. Like, I know, it's uh, 
It's another lifetime away. Some of these Canadians weren't even playing basketball then. Well, Spain, get the ball back after that unsportsmanlike on Brooks. Abrines, why not get it to him? He has a hot hand. Hernan Gomez, ooh, spin move. And he flexes again, and for good reason. Nice speed on that attack by Spain. Well, it's a, it's a five-point play again. It's another big play with the unsportsmanlike. Alexander Walker gets it up to Shea. Guarded by Rudy Fernandez. Nice contest. And a foul this time, I believe, is going to go against Spain. On the rebound, as we saw Olinik on the ground after that one. See, and that's the best example of putting into place co what coach has said. You just keep playing hard, and he'll deal with the other stuff. Olinik just played hard and then got position, gets fouled. He's going to go to the free throw line. Well, Powell, maybe good reason there, asking yeah. for the offensive against Hernan Gomez as he hooked him. <laughs> I'm not sure what the delay is now. It's a two. Is it? Is that the fourth or the fifth? I think it's the fourth. So it's it's the next time they go to the line. Again, another example of Spain managing fouls again. 2.37 before they get into the penalty. Powell to Olenek, Olenek. Nice defense. Alexander Walker, he penetrates and is going to go to the free throw line. Is that Hogan Gomez is... And that shot is good by Alexander Walker. 228. It was that unsportsmanlike, that five-point play on the other end. So they've had a four-point and a five-point play on either on, on unsportsmanlike fouls and an after-the-shot foul. Hernan Gomez gives it back up to Nunez. And nice pass into his Jeez. brother. And right now, Canada cannot defend that little 45 pick and roll action. Almost a handoff. Yep. Gilgis Alexander makes it look easy. If they're going to come and help, they have to come a little bit of help once he gets his feet in the key weight. Well, I don't think he misses. Not a lot, that's for sure. Claver. With Wayla, he's not afraid to take the shot. Oh, nice back door. Nice heads up read. It's a brotherly connection. Last couple possessions. SGA goes at Claver. And he was fouled on the pass, but it doesn't matter because he's going to go to the free throw line. I mean, the, the, the difference in half-court basketball is, is obviously start with Canada a lot on the dribble, a lot of individual going inside before they can make an assist. Spain moving the ball, continually moving the basketball. Sharing the ball, getting a lot deeper in the clock. It's really challenging Canada's team defense on it. If they can get past that initial pressure, they're getting good looks. First one's good, as they cut into the lead a little bit here. And misses the second, Hernan Gomez comes up with it. Spain now with an opportunity as this quarter is coming to an end.
patience by Spain. Nunez, tough shot. And a box out foul is gonna go against Alexander Walker. Not sure what else he could have done in that situation. Well, the only thing, he, he fell and he carried lost it. His, yeah. yeah, and he's going underneath him, but... Nunes, I'm impressed the way the youngster's really been aggressive on plays. It's a lot of contact away from the ball. I know now why I don't want, I've never wanted to be a referee. There's <laughs> so much, uh, the, the physicality around the basketball is, is as strong as we've seen it in any game so far. It's being matched, there's yeah. a, lot, a lot of the guys, a lot of the Spanish guys have had NBA experience. It won't shock them that, that, that that's the level of the defense. So it's very much, you know, the officials are, are, it's a tough ask for the officials on this one, but there are three of them. They should be able to, they're the best we've got in the world. So no problem for them to deal with it. Well, Spain now, they have an eight point lead. There's just under a minute as Coach Fernandez is gonna take his second time out. And you said it, this has been a very, very physical game so far. Defensively physical. Yeah. Let's listen in. one minute and you saw those statistics I mean second chance points Spain already have 10 yeah, that's nine it. offensive rebound that's the difference right there that, that is literally the difference right you, you there's no there's hardly any difference anywhere else Canada probably shooting the three slightly better but that's and if you just which way round that was gonna be I'd have said the other way around yeah, yeah. Spain will up, be up the floor here. How, I, I'm not sure, I don't think they're going to go hard here. This will just be to try and contain and delay. Dort gets it in. And yeah, you said it, not really hard as they fall back into what looks like a little bit of a zone. Oh no, they're a man, no, no. They're going to hold, they're, they're, playing, they're playing the gaps between the ball and the player they're guarding, trying to take away space. Well, they find Powell somehow. His shot no good. Edge him. He's got to be careful. Doesn't want to pick up an offensive rebounding foul and put Spain on the line. They need to get a stop, and then they'll have another possession offensively. Hernan Gomez gets it back. Goes inside. Rituela, I told you, he's not afraid to shoot when the shot clock is coming down. Well, he's instant offense, you know, his role wherever he's played is to come in and score. Right through, he was a kid in Madrid. They're just gonna double that. Alexander Walker at the buzzer. It is no good. And Spain have to be happy with their first half performance. As they are leading by 10, 48 to 38 over Canada. Well, numbers-wise, as we said, not a lot of difference to choose between them on the numbers you're going to see here. You know, Spain with 48 points and a half against a very, very good defensive Canadian team, and their ball movement is exceptional. Assist-wise, 15 to 9 on assists, which is, you know, obviously that's Spanish basketball, but the rebound numbers are the ones that separate the two. Again, Gomez has had a huge first half, 18 points personal. And you know what? It's, it's the crazy thing for me when I'm talking through this. I thought Canada were at times so much better 
that had that was making it so much harder for Spain. But Spain have dealt with that, and that's what we were talking about before the game. Spain are used to being in this situation, used to finding ways to making it work. Whereas I'm not sure Canada's still standing a little bit too much. We're going to go look at the key players that we talked about before the game. So, well, both of them are, are putting in performances. Willie Hogan Gomez with 18 points. Sheikh Elias Alexander with the third team. Both shooting good percentages. It's six free throw trips for Willie, which is a big number. And I think at the end of the day, when we take a look at these best plays, there's a lot of highlights, but I think the defense has been exceptional. I think at times, Spain have survived with it, especially when they had like Dieth and uh, Yule in the back court. And Aldama really had a big impact. Yep. I thought Garuba had a big impact as well for Spain, but they were surviving with it. And I suppose you've got to say, 24 seconds is the length of the shot clock. Not 15 when Spain are, are surviving. The backdoor cuts, the down screens, releasing shooters late in the clock. Canada have to play 24 seconds, not 15, 16, 17. And I don't really know what happened to RJ Barrett in that second quarter. He had fouls. Yeah, he had he fouls. He got into foul trouble, and I think uh, Coach didn't really want to take the risk because he was definitely the bright spot after that first quarter, yep. but he had to go to the bench with three fouls. They took the chance of Brooks, didn't take the chance of yeah. RJ Barrett. And it's a 10 point game, and that's an RJ Barrett difference as well as the stats that we've seen. But it's a great game of basketball in terms of the intensity. It has every aspect you want. It has a major outcome on the line. So we'll see what how the second half materializes. But what Canada have to do defensively is play for 24 seconds. Yeah, I agree. You you can feel the intensity here at halftime as Spain are up 10. Well, we will be back with a lot of great second half action, I'm sure. Whatever our gender, color, belief or capability, we are all on the same team. We have the power to change lives through basketball. Together, Together we, we are, are stronger. stronger. No, no matter, matter your, your origin, origin, basketball can bring everyone together. Basketball for good. Jones down the middle, throws up, and again, the king of South Sudan just went up Juba Airlines and connected with the alley oop. When young Gabriel will turn on by 12 points. She's now trying to hang in the air, and somehow, someway, Shilde to it down just went coast to coast. That is incredible, coach. Yeah, beautiful finish here. Dundao giving up so much size. Kobo is open in the corner. He takes his time, and for good reason, as he sees that shot go in at the buzzer. Holding on, he'll give it to his buddy. What a nab. Hey, remember the name. He's gonna go to the line to shoot one. Right? He didn't even realize he got hit on the dunk. Watch it now, look at the three-pointer. Up in the mid range, puts it up and just gets it to drop right at the end of the first half. And you can just hear this crowd slowly get back into this game. Oh, what a rejection by AJ Edu. Oh, 
Tierney. Just beautifully read. Knew that the defense was coming at him. Have a look at it. So he assesses the situation. He sees two of them coming at him. And the no-looker in transition. The pass deflected. It goes to Marai. Oh, he gets rejected. Tony Smith-Milner. Where did that come from? It's Mexico. raises her eyebrows.
they really need him on the floor because defensively he's huge. His, his physicality at that, in the, on the, you know, de playing defense on guards. And when they switch, he's got enough strength to really do a, a decent job in any switching situation. It was the first one, as we talked about at the time, that was the bad one. If he'd have had, even though I think he was very hard done by in the offensive uh, foul that was called on uh, later on, I think it's uh, that crazy first one is the one that he'll rue. I just, one, I think, whether it's a made basket or the off of a stop, I think they've just got to push and be quick more often. Again, Gomez with 18, Nunes with a five assist. And we were just saying before we came back, Nunes didn't play last time. He didn't play very well in the game. He didn't play much last time. Didn't play very well in the game before. And, you know, coach challenged him, and he's come out here in this game and really responded really well. He's had a really strong game, isn't he? You know, he hasn't really made a lot of hoop scores, etc. But he has really done a good job at the guard spot. 19 years old, going against an NBA All-Star. Uh, this is his fourth game at this World Cup with five plus assists, and we're only halftime. The only other player to do that before they turn 20 was Ricky Rubio. We, so. uh, no, we, uh, <laughs> and this one is the thing both of us keep saying, we don't want to make that comparison no. because people are their own self. But, but all the other... Everyone else is going to make it. Anyway. Everyone else, and also, you know, if you talk about players under 20, well, Ricky Rubio was the other one who was doing the kind of things that Juan Nunez is. Yeah. And, and and you quite rightly said, I think, in Spain's first game, they're completely different. I mean, Nunez yeah. is a better shooter. Ricky's a bit stronger, a bit taller, a bit bigger, does it in a different way, has other ways to score. He's just a great, was a great passer when he was young. So they're very, very different. But their numbers tell you they're both, well, Nunez has got the potential to get to that level. And he's in the best country because he's now at the beginning of a long career as long as he stays healthy. Yep, uh, I think we're going to definitely be talking about Nunez. There he is right there on your screen for many, many years to come playing for Spain. And, you know, he's going to be playing for some big time EuroLeague teams in the future as well. Yeah, that'll, that'll be the interesting thing about where his career takes him. Well, well he's, he's just coming out yeah. now. He's entitled to come out late. You know, he's, uh, he played 14 minutes a lot, three or four minutes more than any other Spanish player. Just had an incredible first half. 18 points, six from 10 from the floor. Really, in, he's an incredible player. And obviously, as you, you mentioned, MVP from last season's Eurobasket, where Spain added the European title to the World Cup title. Spanish fans are liking it. And we were talking, this This is almost a sold out crowd here yeah. tonight. Everyone knows what's on the line. It is win or go home for either team here because both of them suffered, I want to say shock losses. They were shock the losses. Other, the other yeah. in the second group, uh, their first games in the second group phase. Totally different type losses because Latvia is, as we keep saying, they're on a bit of a momentum journey, came back from 12 down against Spain. Brazil, I think, really did shock people because they played in an entirely different way as you get a look at the World Cup app. All the details of what's going on here at the World Cup on that app. Download that app. You can see the press conferences as well as the games. You've got highlights, all the news, all the stories on that World Cup app. You'll see that QR code and the courtside QR code at various points during this second half. Well, Nunez trying to get some uh, attention from the coaching staff to figure out who he's guarding, I think. And Dort. Well, how about that? An off ball foul on the inbound as Abrinez just kind of ran into Dort. So he yeah. did a good job here denying. Yeah, he's in stance, has position on the floor. You can't run through him. I think after you see how the game was refereed in the first half, that one. It's not a surprise to me. No, absolutely. Dort really kept his hands right out of there, and the official rewarded him for holding his space. Well, Dort getting the start in lieu of Kelly Olenek. Brooks, no good. And a foul was 
called on the shot? If it was called on the shot, it was really late. So yeah, it was called on the shot. And Brooks. And to be fair, Willie Hogan Gomez oh, yeah. acknowledged it and, and actually said to the referee, yeah, that was a foul. I just felt like it was called very late, oh, like it, oh. almost when the rebound had happened. Well, the ball had gone for the rebound and come back into play. And then, it, then the ball was bumbling around. Then the referee called the foul. Now I'd How many times have you said? You say it. You were just about to well, say it. Well, it's better late, better <laughs> yeah. late and right, you know. And, and I think that's the. That's what my point about that foul in transition in the first half. There was a foul before. You, you didn't call it at the time. Then there was another foul. You should have gone back to the first one. Weird start, should we say, to the. Very uh, weird start. Well, Canada cutting into that lead as they make two on that trip down. They go inside the Willie, who was great. Abrinez left open. That's dangerous. They got lucky. Canada now. Good job, Spain, getting back defensively. But SGA is blocked by Wancho. That's great defense. And called for the reach in. Hey, let's just pick it up at, you know, when it happens and stuff. Shea, Gilgis Alexander came back with a little bit unhappy going after Nunes, and Nunes just crosses him over and draws contact. So I, I know we're, you know, we're not getting too carried away with Nunes. But that's There's, great defense. Oh, super defense. And that's what Wancho gives Spain, a lot of length as well as that quickness. Abrinez turns the corner, kicks it out to Nunes. Nunez now. Baseline penetration, good defense by Powell. Somehow gets it up, no good. And Hernan Gomez, so another foul going against Spain already. That's three in one minute. Let's see here. Well, yeah, he did pull on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not saying, I don't think any of them are wrong either. It's yeah. just, and two of them are loose ball fouls as well, and that's not really Spain. Do I think Brooks exaggerated the, the yeah, fall? Yeah. Yes. Of course but he did. We didn't see that on the other end? Oh, everything, both ways. The Brooks good, now. Only good thing for Spain is that they're sharing him out. Well, Scariolo is not happy. Well, Sergio Scariolo, we, we saw practice before, the, before the, the tournament started, and he's talked about how to defend that pick going under and going over. And he was upset with them in practice, and that was a week ago, and he's still upset with the way they're playing it. And no one's beyond being told something on this team, obviously. <laughs> Brooks. Drives, hang time, gets it to Powell. That's a tough make, but it doesn't matter because it goes in. Spain need to tick it over. They need to get a good look here. They do not want Canada on a roll. Well, we saw Canada come out big against France in the second half. Lapia as well. Willie gets it up to Nunez. Tough take. Oh, oh, oh. Well, but I said, in, an easy one, a nice open yeah. one. <laughs> Barrett, feet set, shot fake, just goes into Hernan Gomez. I was lucky, in my opinion. I thought Hernan Gomez got his feet out of the charge circle. And to be fair to Barrett, though, I think he so stopped himself, stopped. and there, yeah, well, there was minimal contact in the end. Okay. Aldama comes in for Spain. He was so effective in his period of time on the floor. I don't even think they needed to warn uh, Ernest Gomez for a flop. In fact, they've, they've warned the wrong one, in fact, because it was Willie that tried to take the charge. Yeah. They were just rude. They just warned uh, Wancho, so. It's a 3-2 zone from Canada right now. Nunez. That's going to be a moving screen call. So tides have turned a little bit as far as the referees and how they're calling the game for Spain. That's his second. SGA 
Well, no, no, no. I was going to say, it's definitely a foul in the NBA. Not sure if it's a foul here in FIBA. Well, the, but the referee says yes. The Argentinian official said no. He did run into him, though. I just didn't see. A, I didn't see. A, I didn't see. A, there was a no but did call for me. SGA provoke it? Yeah, he, he, gen he generated the contact, and, and I, I think you're right. And it used to be a foul in FIBA as well. You know, if you left your feet, you were going to be in, in, ish, in, in trouble. But the worst thing for the Spanish bench is that the Argentinian official in front of them actually signaled that signal about that. that, that, that oh, the, yeah. The, yeah. That sort of verticality yeah. thing. He signaled that. And then after, later in the play, late, the just other a referee. second after, the other referee who was further from the play called it. And we emphasize, and referees emphasize, they need to work as a team. Mm -hmm. And be on the same page absolutely and that's what's going to will frustrate both sets of coaches but Canada definitely with the momentum nice find inside against the zone is Hernan Gomez as he now has 20 points in this game there's a huge seam in the middle of that one two two at the back Brooks to Dort Dort's three-point shot and it's going to be an offensive foul as they're saying he kicked his leg out on the shot to try and draw the contact, and that is an automatic foul there. Yep. I remember they were talking about that last year. Yep. Well, in fact, it was worse. He'd landed and he kicked it out. Yep. It was, uh... Hogan Gomez is going to go right down the middle of that defense again. And they finally find the mismatch. He goes baseline, great help side from Brooks. And the referees are gonna talk about it here. One wanted a foul, one wants the out of bounds. And she holds the ground and says it's a foul. That's two calls by the same official. And I think a technical foul has also been called. We'll probably get a replay here. Yeah, Sergio uh, Scariolo with a technical foul for Spain. I will make the signal and then talk. I will make the signal and then come in with you. Because technical foul for the bench. Oh, the bench, not the coach. Well, I, I think I think from Sergio Scariolo's perspective, to explain why he's saying that is that the foul count is you know is not really going against them. It's a fourth. It's a Canada have three fouls as well. Well, we didn't we didn't unfortunately get a replay on that offensive foul that got Scariolo. Here, Here it is. Go. I think it's a good call. Brooks was there, but it may I, be a no call. I think it's a no call, and that's what I think he said because he had an angle to see how far, and it should just be an end line ball. Great help side defense. Let's yeah, put it that oh, way. Oh, no. <laughs> Brooks, the, it was Brooks. He kept his hands out. It was, it was really good yeah. defense from him. But that's two huge calls by the, uh, by the American official. Barrett penetrates, finds Dort. Dort. Gives it back to Barrett, his feet are set. And that's what happens when you share the ball. You get open looks. Canada trail by two. They're looking for Hernan Gomez, they find him. The mismatch is there. And a foul is gonna go against Gilgis Alexander. Well, Spain only had the four points in this quarter, and that's the a really tough one by Nunes, and they got it to Hurricane and Gomez against the zone. And they look completely out of rhythm. There's been a lot of fouls both ways. I don't think uh, it's the foul count that's the issue. Nice hands as Dort didn't see the ball, but he had his hands up, and that's a turnover. They're running. Good job by Spain getting back on defense. SGA uses the screen, finds Brooks. Brooks penetrates, Woo, maybe got away with a little bit of a push off. And Sergio Scariolo, he wants to talk about it. So Canada coming out aggressively 
and it has started on the defensive end as they tie the game early in this third quarter on that made basket by Brooks. I think they missed an M1. I think Nunez reached in and hit him on the way out. That's why the ball came out so strangely. Well, I've lost a lot of my Spanish, but I know he asked his players, hey, you guys got to defend tougher one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Plain and simply, you have to be stronger one-on-one. -on -one. Absolutely right, and I think that's uh, that's where the, the thing started for Spain when they matched them in the first half. It's this smaller, more athletic lineup without Kelly Olenek in it, which has been effective because it really has, in that zone in particular, been very active. So the change is to, is to go with that quicker lineup, and it's definitely working for them. Well, Dort is the man who's responsible guarding the four player, which is Aldama. And not exactly the offense that Scariolo wanted out of the timeout. I know that. They find Aldama, and great defensive possession. And Scariolo is not happy over on the sideline as he he's not yelling at the referees anymore. He's yelling at his players now. What? And a technical foul. No, that's it. Yes. A technical foul was called against Rudy Fernandez. Rudy Fernandez was kicking the ball back to RJ Barrett. as Gilgis Alexander. I don't think Rudy Fernandez kicked the ball away at all. Oh, I think it's because she was walking over to it. The referee was walking over to it. But he didn't kick it away from her. He just kicked it back to RJ Barrett. Yeah. SGA, nice defense, Fernandez, as he is now on a mission after that call. They fight Dort in the corner. Great closeout. He goes. Shot fakes, great defensive possession. It's going to stay red ball. But last couple plays have made Spain mad, and you've just seen it. Their reaction has happened on the defensive end. Great defense by Nunes. I do like the way Dodd's playing for Canada, though. Both ends of the floor. They get it into Powell, they find Barrett. Barrett turns the corner. He puts up a tough one. Somehow, Powell, great heads up play. I don't think it was a pass. Oh no, but it sums up the way Canada is so much more keyed in to what's going on at both ends of the floor. With a smaller lineup, they're yeah. also switching absolutely everywhere. Fernandez. Wow. Silences the crowd. Oh, how? At third, 30 in too many years. And, and an offensive foul. Fernandez. So again, Fernandez, who is doing it? It is the captain. It is the five-time World Cup participant. Second most World Cup games ever for a player sacrificing his body and that is just heads up play by Dwight Powell. Yep. Powell's been good. I think Powell's been good the last two games when they've been really struggling he has found a way to contribute. Aldama. Rituela. He is not afraid of the big moments. Fernandez. Finds him. 
And that's going to be a blocking foul going against Dort. And both teams are in the penalty. We're shooting free throws for the last four minutes of this third quarter. If you've watched both games we've had today, this World Cup is, it's truly started. Four fouls with Dort. That's a big call for, for him. I think it was the right call. He yeah. was moving his feet and not really squared to the to the basket. Spain are in that same place they were in the first half with us so far outside the three-point line trying to initiate anything they're trying to run offensively. And the way they dealt with it in the first half was to get some form of penetration, be it on the pass or the dribble, to exploit exploit the space behind that initial ball pressure at the moment they just can't get into those areas and that shot is good yeah it counts it was a lane violation but the ball went in Olenek now back into the game as Powell gets a rest for Canada Olenek's, uh, Olenek's really going to have to do what Powell's been doing really really holding that middle really being effective on the inside for the Canadians. Nice hands by who other than Rudy Fernandez. Well, he's already made one floater, make that two floaters, and still to Linux. Hey, stop flopping. Ideal sort of game from his way where there's not a lot of help to take the space away. Can, sc can score, that's, that's for sure. Yeah. SGA. It's going to go one-on-one -on -one against DF. Kicks it out to Olenek. Olenek shot fake. His shot is good. And decent closeout. Rudy Fernandez yep. ran by him. Ruthuela, I thought maybe got away with a travel. He did. Okay. <laughs> Diaz, back to him. He's going to put it up. No, he finds Aldama. Aldama's response oh. is good. Wow, this is definitely the, the World Cup coming alive here. Well, that is back-to-back -back threes by the captain, Kelly Olenek. We've seen Fernandez, Rudy Fernandez step up as the captain. Oh. Oh, goodness me. Wow. Aldama. And the crowd is loving it. Doesn't really matter who's scoring. Nice hands, Garuba. They're running. Brituela has a little bit of an advantage. And he scores. As Coach Fernandez says, we're fine. Calm down. SGA kisses off the glass. Can't go in. And he's slow to get up. So Spain now, they got a five on four. And Aldama is waking up. <laughs> oh, how about this intensity? As the Spanish bench is absolutely loving it. And that's going to be a timeout called for Canada. As they made a run, they tied the game, but that just woke up Spain. And now they lead by eight with 132. Let's listen in.
Well, Aldama did the same thing in the first half. You know, they were struggling, came in, two threes now, and the throwdown, and an impressive throwdown at that, and the intensity level. And you've got to say, Rudy Fernandez really did ignite Spain's uh, to come alive in this third quarter, because they, they were struggling to get anything to happen. Aldama, 15 big points wow. today as he is feeling it on the offensive end. Barrett is tripped up and it's going to be a jump ball going back to Spain. I thought he was, uh, I thought he got a little tripped, if I'm being honest. It's, uh, it was definitely a tangling together. The referee did have an opportunity to say that happened, but he let it go. And if you didn't see it, you don't call it. But we're not going to get a replay of that one. Well, ball back to Spain as the arrow will change over to Canada. Rithuela gets it to Diaz. He gets it back. SGA. Challenge with defending him, he does. Garuba, no offensive rebound. Edge him. That's a kickball. We've watched Sergio Scariola for many, many, many years. I, I, I haven't seen him this animated, this. Yeah. You know, almost like trying to inspire I don't think he's had to inspire great teams in the way that he's having to get this team really moving. Edge him. No good. Garuba with the big defensive rebound. Spain pushing it. They find Fernandez. And Garuba is going to be fouled by Edge him, so he's going to go to the free throw line. Did, he, Ed, did Edge him have to foul him, or was he going to, was it going to be a tough shot anyway? See, I'm, he's, I'm not sure he's going to make he might have. You don't think he would have dunked it? No, I think he was, I don't think he was. I don't think he had the angle to dunk it. And if they made him change it, don't foul him. We've made this point before. It's uh, very much a, a lineup of coaches on that Spanish bench. The second and third assistants are also up. I do like. I do like what Garuba offers Spain, though. Yeah, me too uniquely offers them because no one else on the on their roster help offers what he does 21 years old as that one is good so great patience come back basically by the second lineup of yeah. the spanish wow. team Absolutely. in this third quarter sga nowhere to go because of the defense how about that brithuela oh fernandez and they got to be careful they get it. Powell, that pass was way too high, so great defensive effort. They're going to throw it up, and he's going to throw it home. Canada, they got to go. And they're not even going to get a shot off. Wow, Spain. Talk about playing defense in the second part of this quarter and some excitement on offense. They were up 10 at half, Canada tied it, but we are going into the fourth with Canada trailing 73 to 61. Well, Spain have seemed to have solved that three point problem up to 40%, but it's been like this the whole game. The stats sort of cancel each other out. Let's take a listen to Fernandez, but we're not gonna hear that. We're gonna look at the best plays of the third quarter. And it was all, all Canada after the start, right from the, uh, un, the offensive foul from the inbound at the start of that third quarter. And against the starting Spanish lineup, they just played quicker, more aggressive. They got things in transition. They attacked the ring. You know, Brooks was just phenomenally strong, as was Dot. Foul trouble then got, you know, Dot had to sit down. And then the unsportsmanlike foul, then the, the, the technical fouls, and you thought Canada were really in a strong position.
Kelly Olnick came off the bench and sort of matched the initial threes from Spain. But Bruce Suela, and you can't say enough about Rudy Fernandez in that third quarter. He makes the three, then he takes the charge at the next possession. You just, you saw, I don't want to say vintage Rudy, but he knows how to show up in the big games. Yeah. As, and, and he also inspires, I think, his teammates to do the same, and they responded. He picked up his intensity, and they responded as well. And let's not forget Dario Buzuela, who came in, and the lineup is the same line that they had in the first half, except Sergi Lule was in the lineup then. So Sergi Yule was in the lineup. He's not Buzuela at the moment in his career, except Buzuela was fearless, got to the basket, made the jumper, also was involved with defensive effort. That's the only change that Sergio Scariolo has got in this lineup, and it's been huge impact on the way this game has gone. Well, there's 10 minutes left here. Winner goes home. Oh, sorry. Winner goes to Manila. The loser goes home as Brooks' shot is good from three. He simply has to stay for the game, doesn't he? Fouls can't be the reason that he's out the game. There you see on the court, Diaz, Fernandez, Brizuela, Aldama, and Garuba for Spain. The response, no good. Almost the offensive rebound, but nice rebound down by Dort, who's playing with four fouls. Dort, thought about it, finds Shea. And Diaz there is going to be called for the foul. You can see Shea is Alexandra getting a little frustrated with the way that Spain are helping on the ball, really putting him under pressure. Then he's got to move it, though. Move it, get it back, because if they're going to help that much, there is, there's some wide open options. He looks tired to me. He does look tired. Brooks, he's already made one. Gets it to SGA. SGA has got the biggest, uh, bigger Garuba on him. That three-point shot is tough, but they didn't let him land, so he's going to go to the free throw line for three Yeah, he took his arm shots. as well. Took oh, his arm, did? yeah. I think he took his arm from where we're sitting as he released it. He was there, and I'm not sure they, it was, I think that's how it looked. That'll disappoint the Spanish bench because they make him take a tough one there. They can send him to the free throw line. I think if Canada share it, if Barrett gets opportunities like he had in the first, there's no problem for them coming back in this game. But when it's so ball focused the way it is with George Alexander, then it, it, you're literally. Well, Canada have never been losing in this tournament as Shea goes two or three. And I think Fernandez hit him, his own teammate. Maybe I'm wrong. As Giriolo wants a foul. I didn't see what happened. No. I don't see a load of, I, I think I think they all know that Fernandez hit him as well, because there's no there's no one getting carried away with the situation at all. The referee's gonna talk about it. Maybe we'll get a replay for you guys. Would be really good right now. If they're not sure, if they didn't see anything, they need to go and have a look at it, which I, th is, I think they're going to have to do. <laughs> Excuse well, me. And we will get a look as well. Exactly. Okay, we are reviewing if the contact match the criteria for an act of violence. Can you go, like, main camera, normal speed first, back, 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 now. Now, can you go point of contact? Yes, this one. Go, 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 go. Go. Same. Go back and, and normal speed, please. You see, I don't see nothing like coming the elbows outside of the cylinder or something. It looks like the defender is coming in. White is coming in to the red, and it's incidental contact. Well, uh, it's, it's, uh, no call. So after review, the contact didn't match the criteria, so we have a no call. Can you go back? Yes. 
So white guard possession with, oh, can you go? Can you go forward, forward, forward? With 9-0, 9-0, no. Go, 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 go. With 9 and 22 because it's his teammate. Well, you and I missed that. It was clearly Brooks who hit him, but the referees explained it. We yep. have a no call on the play. Why do we have the ball side out? Brooks is very happy. He doesn't need a foul in a situation like that. And that, for me, that's just him being active on the glass. So Spain coming up with the rebound, so they'll get the ball back and a no call and a little full court press here, it looks like, by Canada as they are trailing seven. Diaz. Pituela. Aldama. Going to take Powell off the dribble. That's a tough shot. No good. Garuba, though, with the rebound, and he... He's fouled, I think. Oh, they call the jump. Jump ball. So it stays with, uh, stays with Spain. We had a jump ball since it was reverted to Cannon the last time. I actually think that's a pretty good call. Yeah, I don't think it's... I don't think it was a foul. No, I don't. What a game he has had for this Spanish team. EF is going to have to put it up, and it's going to go off his leg as he wanted the foul. You know when you have guys like uh, Bruce coming in, and they do really well, and, then, and that's in this level, that, that perhaps is their bit, and then you try and ride it for a little bit too long. And I think Spain are in that place now where they're going to have to start getting into getting the starters back in the game. Barrett, huge first quarter for him, has been quiet somewhat since then. He made a three from there earlier in this quarter, uh, sorry, in the third quarter. That shot's no good, though. And that's going to be called a travel. We're nowhere really to go. Picked up his dribble. And that's, that's the type of thing I'm really, really saying. It's, uh, you ride and get in credit. You don't leave him too long, which it could end up with a turnover as they just did. Brooks to Barrett. He's looking for Dort, finds him. Brooks, that three point shot rattles in. And when he's on the court, good things happen yeah. as he has 17 points. Can he stay on the court has been the question. He only has three. I say only. Fernandez inside to Garuba. Garuba wants to get it back to him. He does. And that's picked off by Brooks. Spain look a little bit like they looked in the fourth quarter against Latvia at the moment. A bit Barrett, no good. Brooks almost with the rebound, but it's going to go back to Spain. So a couple good looks for RJ Barrett from that corner. Spain are going to decide when they go back with Nunes and uh, Abrinas, I think, but I wouldn't. Just a tough, tough Jorge decision. To run. Uh, yeah. And the Ergen Gomez, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Because they're looking really passive at the moment. Rituela takes the contact. Powell, big defensive board. Gilgis Alexander to Barrett. Barrett in out. 
Oh, Garuba though. Brooks. Dort. That corner's been called for Canada. But Canada are getting looks. They're getting, They're getting make, very good looks, yeah. They're getting good looks. They're going to make the Spain aren't getting great looks. They're getting challenged shots. Claver. Rithuelo gets it to Aldama. He's got to put it up. He does. And nice rebound, though, by Spain. So another opportunity, easy two-point basket for Aldama. Great first step, wasn't it? Never a debate, ripped it through. What a game he is having. Another player who I think uh, has played a lot for the Spanish team. But he's someone who's going to be interesting for them in the future as well. Dort, that's a blocking foul. Both referees said a blocking yep. foul. Moving his feet. Yep. Lou Dot as well. Great rebound the time before. You said this this corner on this uh, right hand side is stone cold. Yeah. For Canada. <laughs> Got to try the other one. Yeah. But they have they've been getting good looks. We could be worrisome if they do start knocking down baskets. As we see uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander checking out, he looks tired to me today. It has to be a clear pass to that other player. Sariolo saying that in that situation he was passing off, but the referee quite clear. It's got to be clearly a, a pass off. Canada yet to commit a foul, and they've been de defensively, they've been really good in this quarter. The worry for them is they haven't really taken advantage of it. Well, they need to be aggressive if they want to get back into this game as Dort cannot convert. So Canada, they're still trailing by six. There's plenty of time. What you don't want to see if you're a Canada fan is one-on-one. -on -one. Share the ball offensively. Yeah, get stops on the defensive end. Try and push the tempo. Arbuñez. Hernan Gomez. And that's going to be a reach-in foul. That's great execution by Spain, and, and Barrett's going to get called for the reach, which is his fourth foul. And Spain gradually... I think it's a great option to leave Aldama out there for, for a little longer as well because of how effective he's been. Uh, RJ Barrett picking up his fourth foul. And substitutions now. Nunez. Abrinez. They go inside. Hernan Gomez, he's got a mismatch. He's got to go up against Brooks. Nice cut by Claver. It's a no call. They got to go. Kelly Olenek off the front of the rim. Well, the three-point line for Canada has not been their friend in this quarter. Well, two-pointers just as good are getting to the free throw line. Yep. They don't need to rely on threes. Hernan Gomez inside, and he is fouled. So he's going to go to the free throw line where he has been exceptionally good from the free throw line. Six to six in this game. Tough pass by Nunes. I mean, I he really did, he held his space, but you see the help late. He was looking at it for a long time, could have gambled on it. And this is why Rudy Fernandez is Rudy Fernandez and Sergio Scariolo is that. End of the game, he takes out Aldama, he's only four and a half to go. And he goes back with a veteran because of how he has inspired this team so far today. Got to go with what you know. Hernan Gomez, no good on the first attempt. Well, if there are people who have been there before, it is definitely Her Hernan Gomez, Rudy Fernandez, and Victor Claver yep. for Spain compared to Kelly Olenek played back in 2010. That's it for Canada, who's on the court right now. 
Brooks turns the corner, takes the contact, and finishes. That's a tough take. Oh, that's a seriously great take. And as you said, don't rely on that three-point shot. No need. Still a lot of time. As Nunez finds Claver, he gets it over. Hernan Gomez is going to be fouled on the shot, though. Yeah, and, and I was just about to say, that's so much better on the help. Brooks came over, and he just hit him as he went past. And it's compared to some of the other calls that have been made, it's a little bit ticky-tacky, but really did take Hernan Gomez out of the action that he was in for the shot. Spain's ball reversal and change it again was just running their staff to get higher percentage options. And nice job there as it makes the first to two. It's been quiet in the second half, but he does have 22 points. That's scary to say. Picked up a little foul trouble yeah. as well. And, uh, he picked his fouls up in, in a bunch very quickly. Canada in unusual territory being down at this point in the game. Yeah, they lost to Brazil, but they were more or less neck and neck. Shea, step back, no good. They got the offensive rebound, though. And he finds his cousin, and his cousin says, I got you, don't worry, Alexander Walker with a three-point bucket. It's all about getting stops now and good looks. You don't need to start shooting threes if you're Canada. I'm gonna say this for the next three minutes and 22 seconds. That might have gone off Nunes's foot, but he saves it. Laver gets it to Abrinez. Abrinez, high release, no good. Brooks there. Turns oh, it over. Nunes. What a heads up play. Brignes, Claver, he takes his time. Oh, that one rolls in and out. And Rudy Fernandez is going to pick up the foul. That puts Spain in the penalty, too. No, I, I agree with you 100%. Two forty-seven to go in the game, four-point game, and you're allowed to do that to stop it, which, yeah. you know, really no attempt to play the basketball. Canada with the ball, 247. Coach Fernandez, he's quite rightly making that point. I, I really don't like the situation. They get it into Brooks. This is where Canada, they still need to run their offense. They can't just look for one player. They find Barrett coming off a screen, but that ball just goes out of his hand. So back to Spain. Well, uh, he's going to go, Spain are going to go back to Aldama. And why not? I mean, what a game he's had. Oh, absolutely, you put Aldama in. I mean, yeah, OK, Victor Claver, the veteran, one of the leaders on this team, but the way that Aldama has been playing. They're trying to find her name, her name Gomez. Got Olinick on him now. Abrinez back door, no good. It's going to be a kickball, so a reset to 14. So they already had the mismatch Spain where uh, Olinick was on Nunez. They went the pick and roll, which means they're now willing to go back and switch back. It, Maybe at times you don't always have to go. If you've got the mismatch, just park yourself. Trust Nunes to get you the ball. Powell back into the game for Canada. Rudy Fernandez comes off the screen, curls it. Abrinez, they go inside to their MVP. Hernan Gomez, spin move. Oh, soft touch is no good, though. Well, we got two minutes and a four-point game. Gilgis Alexander. Easily 
gets the basket. And that is a possibility for a three-point play. And patience pays off for Canada. But you can't get too excited. You're still trailing. And who's that foul going against, though? Oh, Rudy Fernandez? Yep. So that's going to be his fourth. We got a game, folks. It's a minute 51 here. The winner will be on a flight to Manila tomorrow. The losers will be heading home. Spain up one, Nunes. They get it to Hernan Gomez. Aldama's been great for them. Abrinez comes off. They find Fernandez penetrating. Oh, Hernan Gomez open underneath. And a foul is called, and that might be RJ Barrett's fifth foul. Nice movement, though. Well, I guess. Spain. Fernandez was the one who really turned the corner, attacked it, made the, the opportunity to go inside off, that, off the dribble. There you go. And Nunes sits. He's done really, really an excellent job for Spain. Diaz back in the game. Well, RJ Barrett has to go to the bench as he has five fouls. And you saw the disappointment on his face as he comes out. Big, big start for RJ Barrett. He cooled off when he picked up that third foul and went to the bench for a long time. Spain up two. Can Willie make it three? Both coaches with two timeouts. I believe Canada still has a challenge. Yeah. They ha challenge. Yeah, they have a challenge. Yeah. Make that three. And substitutions here. So you saw Diaz come in for Nunez. I think that's a defensive yeah, uh, situation, right? Like, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Nunez comes back in on their, if they have a dead ball offensive situation. Same thing with Garuba in for, uh, for, in for Willie. Brooks gives it up to SGA. There's a minute 30. SGA, shake and bake, finds Brooks. Oh, he ties it! What a shot! What a game by Dylan Brooks as he ties it for Canada! A minute 10 here in Jakarta. Abrinez baseline. And he was out of bounds. So ball back to Canada. Goodness me, Canada with an opportunity to take what their their biggest lead, their first lead since uh, early in the game. Since early in the yeah, game. Yeah, first quarter. They still don't bring Molina Gangomas back. Well, he does have four fouls, right? But you can't. But they didn't try and bring him back off. Sorry. Yeah, they didn't try and bring him back after the main hoop, which they could have done because the clock stops. Brooks. What a game he has had. Well, Clover back in to defend Brooks. No surprise. SGA takes Clavier. He's open at 2 0. Oh, and Canada with their first lead since the first quarter. And Spain want to call a timeout. SGA with possibly his biggest two points in a Canada jersey. With that shot right there as he gives them the lead. It was pretty well defended by Victor Claver. Not sure what more he could have done. And Barrett's upset he's not on the court, but he likes what he's seeing. Let's listen in. Okay. Hey, 
Ahora tenemos red. Con Shai rotamos todo. Red con Shai, rotamos todo. Wow. That's a 21 to 7 fourth quarter. It's a little bit deja vu for Spain because Latvia did that to them the other day. They haven't made a three, they've only made one field goal. Big, big possession. They're going to take it full court. That means they get the 24, not the full team. Canada quite understandably up the floor to try and, and they've gone again with that smaller lineup that's been so effective for them in the second half. Yeah. Rithuela in Aldama and Willie Hernan Gomez along with Juan Nunez and Abrinez for Spain. So they got some scorers, that's for sure. Brooks gets a touch on it. Wow, Brooks has been Rithuela. unbelievable. He penetrates. He finds Aldama. Gilgis Alexander with the touch, though. And Dork is going to be rewarded with the steal. Canada now, they're up two. They got a foul. And they do. So Gilgis Alexander will walk to the free throw line. He is shooting 91% from the free throw line in this tournament. You need to stop right now, though, because if I you got carry it, I'm done. I'm done. You, will, you will give him that. Uh, <laughs> I'm done. Huge shot, though. This one is a huge shot, a two possession. Well, he makes it a three-point advantage for Canada. Can he make it a two possession? He can. And another timeout by Spain. Probably going to advance the ball here and go for a quick shot. I mentioned the last jump shot by SGA was probably the biggest. Those are probably two of the biggest free throws in his young Canadian career. Let's listen in. They're going to advance the basketball. It's still a, it's a, it's Canada in control of this situation now completely. You said before the game that you can never write off Spain. No, you can't. But I've got to say the way that Brooks has, has really been tremendous. More than better, most importantly, the way he has played. And it was a defensive play that broke it up the last time with their length and their, their, their quickness. But you can't ever write off Spain. They get it in. Nunez goes against Dort. Oh. And he finishes, so great job there. I don't know what's going no on. One's, no one's called a timeout. No one's called think. a timeout. Coach Fernandez won't want to let Spain organize. They're going to sub. But no, uh, you need to take the ball out. If, if Coach Fernandez didn't call the timeout, Canada should have taken it out quickly. Yeah, but the, the unfortunate, the, oh, they wanted us. They can't stop because it's Canada's basketball. And there was no stoppage of play, right? No stoppage of play because the, 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 the table was the, got it wrong. They blew the buzzer, shouldn't have blown the buzzer. And now there's two coaches from Canada are up right now. Well, finally, Coach Jordi Fernandez says, this is too hectic. But now, I don't it, like this feeling. I'm going to call a timeout. Absolutely. If, if they could have, he didn't want to take it. No, he didn't. If they had gone, it would have been fine. But once it stopped, just take your time. Let's take a listen. Yes, yes. You be strong with the ball. Yes. 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 Yes.
how many timeouts or no? Well, Coach Fernandez reminding his NBA players, you can't call a timeout. I'm the only one who can call timeout, so you got to get the ball in. He's going to take the ball down on this end. Which means he doesn't have to shoot. Spain will foul, but he doesn't theoretically have to shoot the basketball. But Spain, you've got to believe, will foul and foul if they don't steal straight away. And they do foul. So they are up to, there's 13 seconds. There's still a lot of time, out, uh, time left. Spain does not have any timeouts, though. No. They have no timeouts, and th they can't just go in twos now. It's, uh, there's no way that uh, Gilgis Alexander is going to miss both from the line. So they've got to take a three, I believe. As he makes it a three-point game for Canada. <laughs> the bench can't even watch. I believe that was uh, Walker. Make that a four-point game. Two possessions. They got to go full length of the court. They get it in. They get it back to Ruduela. Finds Aldama. Nice look. Great look. And they foul. Well, big three-point basket. This game is not over. You said never count Spain out. Another one of those scenarios, you're on the free throw line, you're one up. If you make both, Spain have got 4.5 seconds from the end line. Four and a half seconds is enough time to get it down. And they have some shooters as Aldama is on the floor. Brituela. Abrinas. Fernandez is not going to be afraid to put that up either. It's a two-point game. Big, big shots. Got to get it the free to the throw line. Got to get it to the right guy. Got to go to tie it. Oh, Whoa, it's the front of the rim. Well, Canada, book your tickets. You're going to Manila. What a comeback win for this young Canadian team as they have stunned Spain. 88 to 85 in favor for Canada. Big game by Shea Gilgis Alexander. This is his third game with 25 plus points. How about Dylan Brooks? Look at this. He had a look, he had a clean look. A centimeter more, and we'd be going to overtime. Hey, that's a game, and well, we kept saying throughout the game, Canada would get a run, and we kept saying their defense would be the key, and you've got to say it was, keeping Spain to 12 points in that fourth quarter, scoring 27 themselves. And he, that's why we kept saying it was so important that Dylan Brooks stayed in the game. Three threes in the fourth quarter, that spot. They were very, very cold from the corner. He got very, very hot from the elbow, from the three-point line. He'll just Alexander, as you'd expect, did a super job down the stretch. But Brooks at both ends for me, oh. the difference maker in terms of securing the win. Just an absolutely tremendous game by him. And if there's any justice, he will be the, the, you know, the player of the game because he really did make it happen. And what it means is we're going to get new World Cup champions as the current champions bow out.
at the stage of the last 16. There will no, be no repeat. No. They wanted to make it to the quarterfinals. They thought that was a realistic goal for them. I think that loss to Latvia the other night put them in a difficult situation. Canada made things difficult for themselves as well with the loss against Brazil. But it doesn't matter because they have just beaten the number one team ranked in the world, Spain. And they're gonna, we're going to see it in a bit. They're going to go through as the group winners. Which, uh, when you look at the court draws for the quarterfinal, you'll see the implication of that. And I don't think, I don't really think we'll know how big, because they could go really deep, Canada. At the quarterfinal, there's no such thing as an easy game, but they've given themselves a chance of going really deep in the World Cup here. Gildress Alexander is uh, the player of the game while you're watching these replays. But I, Dylan Brooks was just phenomenal. Both ends of the floor in the fourth quarter. I mean, we've, we've said it all tournament, tournament long. If he could stay on the floor, he's going to help Canada figure out how to win. Tonight, he had early foul trouble. Much better job in the second half. I know Shea Gilgis Alexander was the MVP of this match, but. Gosh, without Dylan Brooks, Canada wouldn't have won tonight. Well, not only the current World Cup winners, but the current European champions will not be in the quarterfinals. Not with a silver medalist from the Eurobasket last year. Just, just shows you how tough and competitive this World Cup is. But the open looks they created for each other in that fourth quarter was a, such yeah. a marked contrast to the tough shots they tried to create for themselves in the first half. And, you know, okay, we said a bit deja vu-ish, if you want, because Spain went cold in the fourth quarter against Latvia. Well, but uh, it was just a, a great performance. They stayed, I mean, Fernandez can't say enough great things about him because he took a lot of pressure off them by dealing with what they felt that was happening in the first half. And then you've got to say, changing to the smaller lineup, major. And what he said the other day, he needs Brooks to stay in the game. He can't get into foul trouble. Great job. Congratulations to Canada. That's a tremendous job. It's going to take a hell of a team to beat them. It is, and I feel like they have learned from every game in this tournament. And today, they learned as this game went on. And I thought at some point, this young, inexperienced Canadian team would fold to a more experienced yeah. Spanish team because they led for most of the game Spain did. But no, Canada, they found a way to come back. And what a comeback. This team is making history for Canada. So those are the standings. And that is 4-1. and one. Canada are going to finish first. Latvia 4-1. and one. They will finish second. Those are the two teams heading to Manila. Spain and Brazil. Their FIBA World Cup has come to an end. Brazil losing to Latvia earlier, 84-104. to And tonight, the comeback win by Canada, 88-85 to over Spain. From Shona and Mark here in Jakarta, it has been a pleasure. Thank you for tuning in and good night.
TCL play all the game, congrats.